and welcome. This is your coach, Kamul Hassan. Coach Kamul Hassan Network presents My Career, My Future program. Last 18 years, I have been working for the, for the various corporations like HSBC, Ericsson, and also lastly with the Bragg Bank. So what I have learned in the corporate, that is, it's not only that what you know, it's not only that you have, get, you have achieved a very good grade, it's not that you have very talented ability. It's something beyond which is applicable if you want to develop your career into the ladder of corporate. So based on that, based on that learning, I have devised this program along with the other mentors, other seasoned professionals who have achieved significantly into their career. They have diversified their career. They have learned. And all those learnings we are going to share into this program, my career, my future. And I believe that with this sharing, the lessons that we have learned is going to help immensely because whatever we have learned, whatever we have done, the mistakes, the lessons, that's, we believe that going to help you to understand the dynamics, what to do and also what not to do and also, and also when to do what and when not to do what. These are all life long learned lessons we are going to talk about it and in today's episode i have somebody who has worked up to the ladder and who has earned this while working into these different ladders of the career starting from the very beginning to the top of the ladder by being an accountant by a profession who has achieved significantly to become a leader to become the people person of the organization who has handled diversified industries and also diversified role as well what I, what do i mean by saying that not only becoming an accountant but also becoming a people leader you know handling the multiple divisions departments and across the organizations that requires something which you have to be passionate you have to build on that without further delay let me introduce my guest today and you might know that person right now as well, Munshi Abdul Alim, who calls himself lifelong learner, who has started his career 20 years back. And today he has achieved something which I would say not many of us are able to achieve because he kept on learning. He didn't stop learning. He didn't stop understanding his core value, core essence. And thus he has achieved something which you may envy. Let me welcome my guest, Munshi Abdul Alim. Thank you, Kamal Bhai. Uh, thank you for having me today. Um, I think this program definitely is going to help many uh, future leaders to take their career and life to the next level. And uh, everyone has to take some different uh, steps to go to the next level of the ladder. So. Uh, Probably everyone, in whichever layer we are in our corporate life, everyone has their own struggles. And in different level, we need to find different strategy to overcome that, that struggles. So I think, Kamal Bhai, uh, your program will definitely will help the future leaders of Bangladesh and abroad. Absolutely. And this is actually our program now because it's Coach Kamul Hassan, network presence. Network is you, me, and other mentors, and also together, everybody. This is a platform, you know. This is kind of two-way. It's not only me, it's you and other mentors. Because I, what I believe is together, we can create a generation. We can help the generation to come from the campus to corporate. And also those who are young professionals, those who have the tremendous abilities in terms of resource, skill, and everything. But what? We believe is actually, you know, this is something which is required out of the educational background and also out of the skills. So let's talk about how you have started your career 20 years back and how you have achieved the ladder. I know we can talk about, you know, into this segment that what are the organizations that you have worked for? What did you work for? What did you learn? And how did you overcome this? Let's start. Yeah, from thank, thank you very much. Then I need to start from the discussion from my education uh, level because Please, yeah. uh, I in intermediate level basically I study science and in our country normally everyone studies science they want to be a doctor or engineer uh, like I was I wanted to be a doctor and just for the information that I even appeared in the exam <laughs> okay. for the admission three times okay. three times MBBS, but, uh, MBBS uh, yes okay. and I could not 
actually passed those exam and uh, that dream I could not realize in my life. But after that, I tried for different options. I look for options what would suit me in that time. So even I, as I tried three times in in uh, for medical admission exam. That so I back lost in 2000 back in 1992, 90. 93. Whoa, yeah. So, <laughs> so what happened? Actually, I lost one year, okay. and another year was uh, just passing by. And I thought, if I don't take any action or admit somewhere in mm-hmm. something, I I I will be far behind uh, compared to my friends because already I've lost one year. Another mm-hmm. one was just going by. So I decided. I, I thought about how how I could basically overcome and and uh, make up those gaps mm. so i have seen my friends they studied commerce and uh, some of them and that I, means they have started at the time already right you al- have they have already started right. so i i got admitted myself in bcom mm. and in private because i have lost one year to recover right. that what i did i i lost only i recovered one year by doing my bcom in private mm-hmm. and fortunately at that time, I passed BCom, and I thought about doing an MBA from IBA or something else. I didn't know about ICMAB until I actually have seen someone after my intermediate. I, I, I have seen many people from my district there. They were pursuing uh, ICMAB, and I didn't know that much. So I, I thought about, and they say this is a very challenging uh, education. And I have never seen someone really completed this ICMAB from my district. Mm. So I thought, why not take this challenge to be the some, someone from my b- district <laughs> to become a CMA. So anyway, I, got, I passed BCom, I got admitted into uh, ICMAB. Uh, one thing happened to me in 1995, actually, one of my friends' father died and they had restaurants, two big restaurants in Dhaka city. Mm. And he asked me to join one of his restaurants to look after that uh, restaurant full time uh, in day from morning to evening. And at the same time, I can pursue my ICMA also. Mm. Okay. So I actually, I joined that restaurant. I worked there for three and a half years as a restaurant manager. Wow. Yeah, the name of the restaurant is Shokal Shandha. And Where is that? Just for uh, it was it was in Matizil, one branch, and another one is Bijanagar. Okay, still uh, there? Not still there. It is closed probably in 1998-99. Mm. I was there until 1997. Anyway, so this, I, is, this I, is actually unknown chapter of <laughs> complete unknown. But my <laughs> friends know because mm. uh, my the friend of my the name of my friend friend was Rono, and. Our full circle was uh, revolving around him. Mm, he was okay. the key person. Great uh, to know. Yeah. So, yes, I never uh, wrote anything about Shokal Shandha experience in any platform, right? Facebook or LinkedIn. Mm. But this is completely uh, a business experience. Mm. And I, I, was, I was working like a... I'm managing the whole restaurant business, everything. So it was a different experience when I was just a graduate. Right. How was that experience, just, you know, in terms of reflection when you see now? I met many people. When I was there in Bijanagar, normally uh, there are uh, artists. The uh, artists, I say, I say the actors from the TV and cinema, they used to come there, even the political leaders. So I have seen many people. In three years, I have seen people, what they talk, how they talk what are the subjects they discuss i gained so many general knowledge from that experience i was i was sitting there and listening everyone <laughs> okay. and some of the customers they used to ask me mm-hmm. hey come here and have i have some time with me please talk to me mm-hmm. i i so far i remember even amjad hussein the great director of uh, right. the art director director he used to come there and I, we had many discussion uh, poet uh, rejauddin stalin used to come there so mm-hmm. there are many people, I, I can name a lot. Right. Even some of the corporate officials, MDs, and with their team, they used to come there. So even I have seen one of the MD of one company, I, just, I don't want to tell the name. And I, when I passed ICMB, and he was a, fa- he was a fellow member of ICMB, 
and he was surprised. He saw that guy sitting in the corner of the restaurant. He became a CMA. So it's something completely different. And that was the turning point of my life to decide to uh, pursue CMA. And it is completely a blessing from Almighty Allah because I was thinking, uh, I was thinking that I, I, I was a loser at that time. Mm. But it helped me to recover everything. And when I passed CMA and joined my first job in 1999 in Grammy Cybernet, I saw one of my I want to stop you here yeah. and to learn also the ICMAB chapter. So you wanted to break the record, right, as you said. Yeah, yeah. So yes, how was that? Yeah. When I, when I just admitted in ICM, if I tell you one thing, there are in one level there are four subjects. And when I joined the other senior brothers, senior students, they told me don't appear in four subjects in one level at one go. Uh, why? Because this, this is a difficult subject, you better you take. Uh, because the rule was that you have to pass at least two subjects together. If you pass one subject, that will not count. Mm, okay. So you have to pass two, uh, two will count, three will count, but only one will not count. So okay. you better, you better pass, try two subjects and pass that one. So I thought in SSC and HSC, we, we took 10 subjects together. Mm, mm. So why, why can't well, I take four subjects together? So I, try, I, I, I said that time, okay, let me, let me try. Let me try. Let me try. So I actually tried four subjects. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't tell it to anyone. Okay, please. Just I tried to myself uh, the fourth subject. The first thing, uh, the, the, the greatest turning point of my life, I, I, would, I would still remember that day, the, the level one result when it was published, I saw I passed all four. Wow. Yes. And it and was... thought it probably. No, that time I was a very general, nobody even, there, there are many brilliant students in, in my batch. There are three, four, five uh, brilliant students, they are well known. Everyone knows that those are the brilliant students. And I was not. When I passed, 14, 14 students passed the level one at one go. So if everyone expected, the other, other students, they were expected to pass those exams in, in one go. I was not because I was not known to them. I was a completely unknown being there. Mm. So when I passed level one at one go, then everyone actually, I came to the notice of so many people. Mm. Even I, my friends, I used to live in my friend's home and we used to spend whole night playing uh, carom board, card okay. and other things. So all of a sudden, like everybody wanted to know who this chap is, right? The past four courses exactly. and... Even my friends, we used to play together. They didn't allow me to read, study for the exam. They said, you will not pass, it's very difficult. Mm-hmm. But when I passed the first level at one go, they, they, they actually changed their view. They, even the next time when we studied together, they allowed me some time to study. The friend, you know the friends, yeah. they have the demand. Yeah. So they, they basically allowed me to study mm-hmm. for the exams. Can I ask you one thing? So. What was in your mind exactly? Did you believe in yourself that you could pass? Just, what, what, okay, let me tell you one thing. I was very good at math in school. Not in college for different reasons, but in, in school I was very good in maths. And I liked maths, I liked science subjects, math, physics, and other things. But when I actually admitted into ICA maybe, I just realized this accounting and finance and nothing but applied maths. Mm. So I could connect my math uh, and the way of thinking, the math people, the, the way they think in numbers, that matched with the requirement of the finance education. Absolutely. So I, 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 I that was time, a trick kind of, right? Yes. Exactly. And I could really, I, I thought this is the main subject I want because when you connect this math with the business environment, when I say business, it is about creating, uh, it's a transaction. Yeah. But at the, t- at the t- end of the time, the, the ultimate level of the thing I see, it's a business. It's an enterprise which creates value for the people. Society and uh, society. When you connect that basic learning uh, to that one, it basically gives me something very significant. Mm. We feel significant. So when 
I, I first learned that the, the job of a finance guy is to help the top management mm -hmm. to take decision, to, to take better decisions. Informative decision. Informative right? decision. So I thought to being a part of the decision making process, so this is the thing I want to be. Okay. And that basically clicked. Mm. And it, it, you know, everyone wants to be significant. This is yeah. the highest level of the, uh, the uh, need and aspiration, whatever I say. But that basically clicked and I thought, I am in the right profession. Then, uh, okay, then this you is began something. your career. At uh, that time, I, I actually forgot the pain of not, not being a doctor because... <laughs> <laughs> or working in a restaurant. Or either, working, right? <laughs> working in a restaurant, I enjoyed. In, you enjoyed? Yeah. Absolutely, I enjoyed. Because I enjoyed two, two, actually two sides of this environment. One is selling. When the people come, when you sell, yeah. and you, you, you break the records, yeah. even I, 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 this is completely luck. When I used to go to my friend's restaurant, I, I, I used to see that the sales goes up. Yeah. I don't know, it, it's mm -hmm. completely luck. So I, I really love to see the sales numbers are going up. And I, I used to, I love their selling transaction and, and connecting with the people so that they will come to you again and again. And all of the customers, they were uh, kind of close associates. They used to come again and again to have that idea, idea or chat with the people. And it's a complete un different thing, P meeting with people mm -hmm. and also selling. Yeah. If I had the knowledge what I have today, probably I would have been a salesman. Exactly. I was really wondering that probably that incident played a vital role in your understanding the self psychology, understanding the mindset and understanding the behavioral aspect of a people. And also the numbers reflected in the organization's growth, the sales volume, the values, right? Contributing towards like the business as we want to see. So do you think that that, that part of your life, the understanding this business segment, like dealing the human psychology, the buying behavior decisions, really impacted in your career today what you have achieved. Absolutely, absolutely. But I cannot tell you one thing. I cannot probably, I won't be able to connect everything with that link. But it has a, it created a soft side of me. Mm. So it is basically helping in whatever I do. I always bring the customer in, in first. Uh, whenever I think anything, so that I think about the customers. I, I mean both external and internal customers. I think about the profitability of the thing. I think about the process, how we are mm -hmm. doing it. So this holistic thinking is coming from these real life experiences. Yeah. So whenever I go, I can still, I can, I have, I have good experiences, bad experiences. I learn from both the experiences. So then you yeah. began your career with uh, the organization called, uh, what's the organization name? Grammy Cybernet. Grammy Cybernet. Okay. That was the, your first, yeah. first I, corporate job probably you have began in 1999. 1999. Actually, I left Shokal Sandha and, and uh, actually I passed uh, three level at one go uh, in ICMAB. That I, I, I thought, why not I try to complete it in, in within two and a half years. That means within five exams. So what I did, I left Shokal Sandha and I tried, I, I decided to appear two levels together. That fourth okay. and fifth okay. level together because I completed the first three levels. Uh, within uh, three years. That gave you confidence oh, no, okay. and courage. One and a half years, yeah. So I, I tried, if I, if I, I tried two levels together to complete it within five exams. But I, I, I took a leave and I studied full time and I tried, but I failed. But still I learned a lot. What happened? I tried the two levels together. Actually, that time my study ended. I didn't study anything more because mm -hmm. I have completed all the 20 subjects uh, study. So that time I failed, I mean I passed only two subjects out of eight. So I completed for 1400 mark uh, within five exam and after that I, I, I thought this is the right time to join a job because I have completed my study. Mm -hmm. If I join a full time job then I don't need to do that long study because I have, com I have done everything. So just I need to re uh, revise it and, and appear for the exam. So that time I decided to join uh, somewhere and uh, I got, uh, probably this was my first interview, Grammy Sabinet. I, I did first interview and I, I, they accepted me. 
so i joined in okay. ramani 7 7 and i was very excited eight. probably at the time right yeah, definitely and one thing i didn't i didn't think that i they will basically choose me i thought somebody is they will choose somebody else but somehow i i am completely uh, that time i was surprised that they selected me i know some of other candidates they have they have pot- potential also they have other thing so the possibility of the other candidates was much better than me but somehow i got they selected me and i joined there i learned so many things there especially yeah, when you join your first job mm-hmm. uh, you have to know many thing for the first time even to stapl a file you need to learn something Correct. and to to mm-hmm. use, use that pabx phone mm-hmm. i never used pabx phone before joining uh, gamin sir right? i learned that also there okay Uh, even i even i copy how to photocopy yeah how, how to print. photocopy print. how to and uh, even you said how to use computer okay. i didn't have any computer before i just used one of my friends uh, computer just to play something so after this basic learning you went towards like nobodies no first was gaming server oh, then hamming Hamim group right. yes so i when i completed 1400 marks 14 courses i joined uh, gaming server mm-hmm. and what happened with the next two exam i completed full i basically i qualified uh, i passed the cma uh, just after one year within a year then i was fully qualified and when i joined gamin seven and i was the executive yes. the executive level this yeah. is the entry level position yeah. entry level position but in gamin seven and there are other levels also there are junior executive credit assistants a different position but i i would say it's a just entry level for the graduates so and when i passed the other two levels very quickly so even my boss was not a fully qualified professional accountant okay and they helped me they said you now you are qualified and you should try for better job you should be uh, you should try for a better job then i just uh, there is another interview in hamim group and also then the second interview i got selected the thing was in, in between i want to pause and say something yeah please i was an in individual contributor because this knowledge i didn't have that time now i'm saying i'm just reflecting on Looking that back and then yeah mm-hmm. I, I, in gami cyber there are four five people i used to work in a team uh, but when i joined hamim group i was a manager deputy chief accountant so it's a def- deputy manager position mm-hmm. but i was not trained in between my transition mm-hmm. how to manage people mm. so in between i struggled in gami cybernet also to manage six seven people mm. i struggled a lot so i i i i tried to improve my skill that actually led me to learn something about leadership new things new thing nobody yeah. told me yeah. even in organization nobody told me you are now in charge of four five people you have to monitor their day to day performance mm. so you have to have some leadership trainings nobody told me mm. but some from my aspiration to do better i actually stumbled on some books mm. i would say i stumbled on some books because nobody all told me sudden, right? all of a sudden right all of a sudden came across the books i i read some small books uh, how to uh, influence others how basically i i learned only one thing dil karne ki is one of the famous yeah but i i came to one word that time exactly this is not the word but similar to that it was a win win the word win win right said if you can make your team happy and also at the same time you can achieve your goal so this is the thing so just make them your friends mm. and share the things together so that will give you the edge to work in a team that time I, even even i joined in executive position even in the team members all were senior to me mm, okay. in in terms of age so this was a completely different challenge you join a company in the entry level and also people will be reporting to you they are senior to you yeah and It with the, today every time I'll every like, time and without yeah. this leadership skill yeah it's it's completely it's a complete mess if you can if you fail to manage this mm-hmm. people skill it's a complete mess because you will mm-hmm. not be able to deliver the what is expected from you so that time i learned inside i'm telling you mm-hmm. right i i tell you that time i was not fully aware of what was happening there mm-hmm. in terms of this leadership mm-hmm. gap and other thing anyway I, then i moved to uh, gamin saib uh, hamim group just 
to materialize my learning and professional qualification. I became deputy chief accountant. But when I joined Grameen Saibanet, I said, still this is the problem of the industry. Uh, in in, in Grameen Saibanet, it was five working days. Mm. And in Hamim Group, six, six working days. Yeah. So basically the type of a person I want to be, I want to uh, develop myself. I, I love reading books and so many things. Uh, having one, uh, five, six days a week is very tough. In uh, even Hamim group, uh, didn't, uh, people didn't enjoy their, the other holidays also. And the people have to work on the other holidays. So they, uh, for this reason, I, I thought, you know, I want to develop myself. I need some uh, time, some time. So I was trying to Then you move. went to Novartis move. as a manager but business planning and analysis. I actually... My, I joined as a business planning analyst, executive level, okay. not manager. To begin with, right? To be, I, I was a manager, mm -hmm. by, but uh, tell me just one story in between. One of my senior brother, I, I, I say normally he is one of my mentor. He one day told me, I used to work in Hamim Group. He, we, we used to discuss a lot of things together. Uh, very close, we, we were very close. And he one day said to me, the, the caliber you have, you should work for a multinational company. Mm -hmm. you, 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 why you are spoiling, uh, spoiling your time in a local company? He just told me that you deserve a multinational company job. Before that, I never thought about working for any multinational because I came from Lalmanirat, mm -hmm. and no, few, probably my some of my relatives worked in my multinational company, one, especially one. Uh, but normally, I, have, I never seen people working in multinational companies. I never seen, I never met with them. So that actually, I never dreamed to work in a multinational company. Mm -hmm. The highest dream was to work for the government. That means, you know, the BCS job. <laughs> right. And, and for the defense. <laughs> there are, I didn't know people who work in multinational company and they have so different lives, so significant careers and other things. I didn't know that. Anyway, when my, the big brother, a mentor, I would say, he, told me, that time I started to think, so how can I join a multinational company? So I just do, uh, did some study and I, I, I saw something. The multinational companies recruit people who are basically the top of the lot. That means the top five. In Dhaka University, one batch, the first, second, third, goes to the multinational companies or goes to the banks. They so, used to get preferences at the time. Exactly. Yeah. And I, 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 what I, I saw that I, I was not the top of the lot. I was a very average student and, and I never thought to be in terms of uh, that level. I, 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 I normally, at our time, people, we used to say the stand. Mm. The, who stand in the examinations, basically they got chance in the multinational job. Anyway, after that I thought and I got a call. I don't exactly remember, probably, uh, I got a call or probably that brother took my CV and forwarded it to Novartis and they interviewed me. And in the interview, I said so many bad things even. This, uh, they asked me one question, what is your strength? I said, my connection with so many people, this is my strength. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, actually I said it on the, on the spot, mm -hmm. in impromptu answer basically. And he said, how so many people is, can become your strength? I said, mm -hmm. okay, if I face any problem in one area, mm -hmm. I, I have the connection, I can just call him. What I can do? What, is the, what are the solutions? So if they give some insight, that will help me to take my decision. So that's a different and core strength. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that yeah. They were surprised. I thought I, I, I won't be selected, at that time they will not select me, but ultimately they selected me and, and, and I joined there as a business planning Excellent. analyst, BPA. Analyst. Okay. Basically, uh, the designation is BPA, they used to call controller. Oh, okay. This is controller mm -hmm. position. The name of the position is controller. Mm -hmm. and there are different levels. Some of the controllers are uh, E level, D. entry level, executive level? Or? It's not entry level. There, this is a flat organization. Okay. No, okay. Nobody. But you said that, you say it is entry level, mm -hmm. but it's a very flat organization. Okay. Uh, e level, then you, you, uh, that was the E level, then D, C, B, E, A is the oh. managing director. So then you moved to like uh, Novartis, like analytical experience. I basically in Novartis, what I learned, I applied, I applied my learning from my profession, 
and what happened novelties is a, a company that grows leaders they that grows talent you will find if you look into the top of the the organization you will see their homegrown leaders you will find many homegrown leaders in novelties so they prepare they cultivate people they cultivate talents in the organization and what changed what helped me in novelties one of my boss uh, reporting boss he told me ali me you, you don't don't be a finance guy you try to be a business guy and whenever you go to a, a chemist shop ask about the products and which company products is selling more can, can try to get some business insights what's happening and that suggestion he told me don't be a finance guy don't have that tunnel vision just don't don't look into the numbers only try to be a business guy that time that helped me a lot and i i really i i, I definitely i pray for that brother I, if i know his i tell his name many people know him and I, he will know definitely and i appreciate that that uh, it's a kind of mentor's advice right to somebody who like who likes you who knows you probably helped you to giving this feedback probably fit forward like so that you could design and develop based on this and you got a courage absolutely i tell you there are two types of people in corporates there are people like that brother uh, that boss they will encourage you to do something good and there are negative people also so i have seen both even in there are some people said okay why you are you you focus on your current job don't think think about your future there are this type of people and i say it's very clear and i don't need to tell you what suggestion you take and what not i did not listen to them basically there are many people in icmab they told me don't try for four subjects together right. uh, i did, i didn't listen to them yeah. uh, still i don't listen yeah. listen to those True. negative people because uh, you said exactly the very right word tunnel vision and also the uh, they actually try to impose their self limiting belief to someone else because it's the belief that they carry inside but they try to dumb it to somebody else so this kind of people yeah this is uh, more common and uh, you have to know like who is your real well wisher who is actually giving you the feedback or trying to give you his understanding about his limitations because i would say this is actually his self created limitations he might not know but probably he has struggled and he is stopped and he thinks and he believes that all of others probably the same ability that's really good so let's move forward to like you went to then option in pharmaceuticals option in pharma as a manager budgeting and costing even came back to like uh, managing the accounting and finance then then you moved to british american tobacco as the as a corporate finance manager and you also worked uh, in rohima froz as head of finance then shell tech as general manager uh, finance controller as uh, uh, in uh, bureau of heritage right yes uh, and then your last organization was uh, fiber at home as like director and overall managing the hr admin scm internal audit and other business segment so you have what we see that is you have grown the different ladders of the organization and different segment different wing and different verticals so tell us something about as a whole that how did you develop this acumen this knowledge and this hunger and uh, this aptitude also okay just let me uh, let me just uh, put some light on why i moved from novartis to option in pharma so novartis is a global multinational company and and why i moved to option in pharma option in pharma is a local was a local company and that why i told about one big brother he used to work he moved from a multinational to option in pharma okay so i i i actually we used to discuss a lot and i, I learned one thing that option in pharma was trying to something do something and their own especially one thing they wanted to develop their own erp and i was exposed to sap in in uh, novartis okay and i had i really liked their sap platform and i did very well in terms of sap i say i i really did very well in in novartis but when i heard that somebody some local people some owners they want to create their own platform that excited me and and some somehow when he moved out from option in i applied for that position that big brother i i applied for his position and he's i got selected 
And I took that challenge also moving from a multinational company and local company decision. I definitely, it was a very challenging decision. But that time I was very young and, and I was not married. And I, I, when I got an offer with a better package, with a full-time car and every facility at that age, even I'm not, I was not married. Uh, so I, I actually could not resist to, to avert that offer and also the opportunity to work to develop an uh, integrated back in uh, platform. Back in 2004. Four. Right. Basically, in 2003, I took the decision and I joined in Opsonin in 1st January, January yeah. 2004. Right. So actually, I could join one month back. But they requested option okay. in <laughs> for to uh, to do that because you know they at the end of the uh, year the closing needs to be right. done. So, so I I done the closing and, and then he moved, moved to the completed two and a half uh, almost three years two years nine months. Yeah. And then he moved again towards another I, uh, I, multinational British yeah, and tobacco. Exactly. I was very happy in option option in pharma in terms of work because there are many development works are going on and and uh, that that work basically if I say. The first time I contributed something, I did something in Opsonin. I, I tried to implement something. But again, I never thought about some other multinationals like BAT. Uh, I will work there. I, I got a call from Headhunter and they said, uh, you go. first time I refused. Nobody knows that I refused first time. Mm, okay. So I, I refused to go there because there are some other reason also. I thought basically I'm not qualified. Basically, I'm, I'm less qualified. <laughs> okay. And BAT is something big. I have seen some people in working in BAT, they're exceptional. So I thought I'm not that worthy. You're not ready probably. Uh, time probably time. I was yeah. not ready. Even I work in, in my, my local, local, mind, yeah. local company, multi, uh, local pharmaceutical company. The head under said, go and, uh, go and just mm -hmm. face it. Yeah. Even if you face the interview, mm -hmm. you will learn so many things. But only for that reason, I went in the interview. Okay. I tell you, man, that is true. I learned so many things during the interview. Okay. It was a completely different set of interview. Uh, there was intro exercise, role playing, mm. uh, amazing. Even interview changed my mind. Uh, actually, mm. the interview process, after facing the interview process, I, I got uh, the aspiration to work for their company. The company that takes the interview in that manner, mm. how good they can be. And I, I tell you one thing in very short, I, uh, my work life, I, 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 I tenure in BAT was excellent. I moved out from BAT for, for, for a different reason because I thought something, uh, right. a, I, I, I told that organization also that uh, I want to eliminate some contradicting beliefs in me. Correct. So, so that was personal, yeah. yeah. Very personal. So even still I, I struggle with this thing and probably many of the people I will struggle with it's kind of ethics and probably your values and principles. Yes, kind of things, the contradictions right? yeah. with values and principles. Right. So that's why I moved, moved out from you BAT. You towards from the BAT to Corona yeah. Frost, the But in terms of people and process, BAT is an excellent organization. There's no doubt. Yeah. There's no doubt. It's a, it's, it's a development, uh, developmental factory for the human resources. And exactly. The and they create leaders in yeah. one go. BAT creates leaders. I've seen people you look into the organization, you will see people leading the organization all came from the very basic grassroots True. level. Fantastic. So that's what was like your five years. Like In one word, one I say they keep your basic right. Fantastic. So now you moved uh, uh, from the fiber at home and let's talk about how our youth, young professionals and uh, students, those who are preparing now at university level, maybe third year, maybe fourth year, or even maybe in ICMAB or chartered accounting level, like uh, in various uh, capacity. So how they could really develop themselves to face the challenge of today's world, the business, the people industry, and uh, overall that everybody has, everyone has a team actually to up the ladder and achieve the highest position and also some of us we think like earning you know a lot of money a lots of money who doesn't want everybody right that's true and how we could actually mix match and yet fulfill our life because life eventually is actually fulfillment how you actually feel happiness inside how you see the satisfaction end of the day is actually 
fulfillment which matters but let's talk about where to begin and how to develop that beginning okay you know i, I now i introduce myself as a theorist <laughs> i i bring in i bring in new theories in terms of like that i i study a lot i oversee people i discuss with people i learn from people and uh, to say about my competency i have only one competency that is i am a passive learner i can learn from others this is my only one competency i don't have other competency yeah, when i see, when i see people doing something i can do that i can replicate the things okay. uh, you can say i can copy yes okay. i cannot nobody can exactly copy someone yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway to answer the yeah. thing i i will give you a theory please yeah. okay my, I, I, you, many people know that i i basically um, say one thing 3m philosophy mm. okay. so for the for the young generation yeah, for the new professional uh, my 3m 3m philosophy still i think it will still help you though i changed my 3m philosophy from 3m to 9m mm. i would request everyone to look into the 9m philosophy but let me give the answer from the 3m perspective mm. anyone being a professional or or a just just a, a student in university mm -hmm. for everyone it is applicable mm, okay. the number the first aim of my philosophy first aim is for mastery at least in one area we have to be a master if i am a new uh, university student mm. i need to focus one area mm. and i need to take my understanding mm. knowledge to the mastery level mm. or expert level mm. so you know there are so many books available so many mentors available so many mm. uh, teachers available so many courses are offered mm. by different organization you target one 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 area and you master that and this is for the open students mm -hmm. so for the for the professionals for example if, if somebody wants to be a finance leader mm -hmm. so I, I my request is master at least one Pro. thing you claim that i am best at this one there expert is no of that. i am expert of mm -hmm. that area there is no right. one else and if somebody says the authority to establish the authority exactly if it is a vat and vat and tax be a master of it if it is analysis be a master of it if it is reporting be a master of it if it is accounting be a master of it if it is the erp system be a master of it at least master at least one area mm -hmm. this that is the would, first first thing help actually immensely in today's world because this is uh, it's not today like you know not jack up all trade master of none but today eventually matters is master at least one thing so that's the lifelong learned experience and realization fantastic there are third m 3m third m is for mesh. mesh so mesh i i mean the connectedness mm. so the next level is you connect you connect mesh of few things i don't say mesh of people only i i say mesh of few things you connect with different people a different type of people if you are an accountant don't connect with only accountants connect with the marketing people supply chain people other people production people lawyers doctors mix with different kind of people that that basically helps to reach that highway and and also not only the people connect with the disciplines if you are a finance background guy you connect with you learn something from the marketing you learn something from hr you learn some, something from the production you learn something from uh, the other subjects when you add something with your core area that you are expert in there it creates it creates something beautiful you see all the innovations all the innovations this world is enjoying is basically connecting is coming from what connecting different disciplines so you must also try to connect it with, with different di discipline and just don't don't just focus on only one area bring in all different things in your life so these three thing your mastery in one area and your meaning your pursuit for meaning creating meaning and the mesh creating a connected world by connected with different people different uh, discipline and even the finance people there is another thing when you can connect with different disciplines that basically your information system that's basically your mis that's basically your erp as i am a, i am a finance guy that's why i am giving yeah. finance example so if you cannot connect 
with things and work groups or people or processes, your ERP will not, will not help you. True. <laughs> because ERP for what? ERP actually to make others' life or making the process, making the entire business meaningful and uh, making it easier rather than making it complex. So understanding the, the overall uh, psychology of people, business and finance, how it talks. I started just uh, speaking on this 3M philosophy probably seven, eight years back. After that, very recently, I, I, I actually moved from that from this 3M to 9M. Okay. So I will I will request all the audience mm. uh, find it nine find nine try it, uh, look for 9M in LinkedIn. Uh, there is a very small version of it in LinkedIn, but definitely I will I will post a bigger version very sure. soon. Sure. One last thought for the audience, and then we can wrap it up. Okay, from my side, if I summarize my whole thing, I would say only one thing. If I look into what I am doing at right now, there are people around the world who is doing it better than me. And I need to look for this, how they are doing it. And this is something will keep, I say myself as a lifelong learner. Why? Because I have found this, I've seen this happening every time. I thought I was the best. But when I saw somebody is doing it much better than me, so that means we all have the opportunities to improve. So I, I request you look always be on a look for that so that you try to find out who is doing it better and how and learn it and actually experience it and to, by developing yourself and by bringing in those knowledge in your life. So that was my li uh, thought from my side and ultimately have a good have a really good mentor or coach that will help you to live your life to your fullest potential and to help you go a long way absolutely thank you so much for much. being part and uh, being the mentor of this platform and i wish you all the very best because i know i trust you i believe you why because you have the potential you have things inside you have everything which what is required to become a to, to become the most successful people on your industry, on your arena. But do you know what is your strength? Have you tried to know what is your strength? If not, now is the time to understand who you are. Know your strength. That's why Socrates said, know thyself. This is one of the most valuable statement in the earth, in the history of the human being. Know thyself. Know your strength and play accordingly. And I'm sure that you would reach your destination sooner than later. I believe in you. Thank you for watching and thank you for staying with us. May Almighty bless all of us. Stay well and stay tuned.